Okay. I, I know some of you don't like to go to YouTube, but this is going to be a little bit of a longer video. And as a result, you guys are going to have to go to YouTube because I'm not going to break it up into 10 million things. But uh, I am going to rant for a little bit here, if you, if you don't mind. Uh, there's some realizations that smack you in the face as you get a little bit through life. And uh, I'm beginning to enter, my family is beginning to enter that phase of the year in which we look back at the period of time in which uh, my biggest realization since the birth of my children uh, smacked me in the face and um, that's the period of time that uh, my father's health went to, to hell in a handbasket rapidly he had been sick for 30 years don't get me wrong. He's He had been sick forever. And listen, I know you guys are like, quit making videos while you drive. I don't look at the phone. I'm looking. That's why I have a stand. I can hit play as I'm pulling away from my driveway. And I could just rant until I get to my destination. And it's no different than talking on a phone. I'm not looking at you. I'm not looking for commentary. So I understand where you're coming from. But I, we're, we're good. Any hoodles. Popped up in my Facebook memories today. It's a lot of you guys from TikTok probably not, or, or Instagram, probably not totally familiar with my father and the story behind him, because I've only been on these platforms for a small amount of time, and unless you bought my book and read the stories about him, then, then you don't know everything, but he, he, he was sick for a very long period of time, then my stepmother died just a couple of months before my son was born in 2011, my dad moved in with me the day after uh, she died, and he lived with us for four years until he died. And uh, he was always in bad health. He was always had some kind of ailment going on. But he could get around. He could go to the store. He could go back into the city, which is an you know an hour drive, and he could see his friends and yada yada yada. He 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 was still ambulatory, ambulat, ambulat, motherfucker. He could get around. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what the word is. Ambulatory, ambulate. I don't care. Whatever. He was fine. He was fine. And then all of a sudden, he wasn't fine. And when he all of a sudden wasn't fine, um, he got bad in, in a hurry. Now, for those of you who don't know, uh, my wife did the heavy lifting, okay? She, I was running the, my company. She still had her job, don't get me wrong. She had a lot of important duties at her job, but it was kind of like she could be away from there from time to time. She could, she could still take phone calls and do her job. If I wasn't on a mower, if I wasn't on a job site, shit wasn't getting done. So she did the heavy lifting while I continued to work my ass off and um, shit got real fucking bad, real, real fucking fast. So in today's memories popped up that um, it was the anniversary of when he had this health issue and it started going fucking downhill. Um... And it doesn't look like my fucking barber is going to be open right now, or does it? We're going to wait here for a minute. Um, anyway, back to back to what I was saying. So um, he started to go downhill in a hurry, and he was in and out of, of, of nursing home care, and he was in and out of, of doctor's offices and the hospital, and... Uh, Today was the anniversary in which we were basically, my wife and I were grasping what was being said in, in the sense that what, 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 we're, what we were being told was in order for him to continue to live, and he could live, he could live many more years, but in order for him to continue to live, he would be a double amputee. They needed to take one of his legs at the knee and one on one on his other leg they need to take him at the at the ankle so his foot and his and his lower leg and so therefore yeah, he could barely get around as it was <laughs> with two legs he would be bedridden the rest of his life he could live many more years but he's bedridden and it was this point in time that things really started to get fucking bad 
And within a handful of months, by July 8th, he would be gone. He, uh, he chose to go into hospice on his own volition, sound mind. He, uh, he, he whatever, he, we can cover that in another video. I've covered it in the past, but I know some of the people who follow me now don't know it. And uh, he made it eight days in hospice before passing. He had four good days. On the fourth day, my kids saw him, played, played Go Fish with him. I have it on videotape. And uh, and then the next day, he was he was unable to speak, unable to eat. Four days later, he died. The realization that smacked me when that happened. Like I said, it was the it was probably the biggest. So you have you have moments of realization in your life that are life changing, right? Um. Uh, the day I ran away from from my mother's house and decided not to get beat anymore. You know, I just fucking, I did what I did. I ran away. I called my father. He came and picked me up. I walked 40, 45 minutes to go to, to get to a pay phone. Um, and it, later on that night, when I was at my father's house, the realization hit me that, you know, I, of what I did. This was a life-changing moment, you know? And then uh, I had this this lifestyle I was living for a very long time and then and then uh, 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 the death of a singer the realization hits me that you know your lifestyle the, the way you live your life is over then I got married and within a couple of days of that the realization hit me that oh my god you, you're married then I had a kid and there was like you know, so you have these life-changing realization moments these these punch you in the fucking mouth moments and that was my father's death was another one and what it did was multifaceted I would say it the realization hit me that I'm next that was the first thing that kind of hit me was I'm next you know um well the first thing that hit me was holy shit he's gone I, he's he's you know which is Uh, a realization enough. But then you realize that, uh, you know, you now just took over your father's spot, right? I've said, I've talked about this before, right? You're young, you have your parents, your grandparents are old, and um, you see your parents taking care of your grandparents, you see your grandparents deteriorate, you see your grandparents die, and then your parents become that next in line. And it's uh, it's it's a harsh reality to deal with. Well, then when your parents die, you're next in line. And so, forget about my birth mother, okay? My birth mother died a couple of years ago. And my birth mother... The, the death of my birth mother was uh, nothing more than the expiration of the physical vessel that brought me into the world. There, other than that, the the emotional connection that I shared with that woman was nil, right? It, it, it was just, it was a significant moment in that the, the physical being that brought me to be passed away. That was it. My parents died in 2011 and 2015. My stepmother in 11, my father in 15. And once my father died, they were all gone. Right? Grandparents, all gone. Parents, all gone. You're next in line. And since that moment, I've had, it may not always come out in the way I conduct myself or the way I act every day or every moment of every day, but I've had a mental changing of the guard. 
<clears throat> so I'm an atheist. I don't believe in an afterlife. I don't believe I'm going to heaven or hell because I don't believe there is any of that. I don't believe in a soul. I believe we're all physical carbon-based beings. We're, I've said it before that we're all highly organized masses of borrowed energy. Um, and I truly believe that. And the old man's death and this period of time that's going to start bringing up all those significant moments in the decline of the old man uh, really made me realize that my time is finite. I'm a lot fucking closer to the end. Listen, I'm nowhere near death, okay? I'm not. I, I Sometimes I sound like some weird old man, but it just, your brain thinks about these things. I know my time is finite, right? I was just talking to my wife about this the other day. You know, and I said, if, if I'm lucky, I got 20 good. I'm not saying only 20. If I'm lucky, if I'm fucking disgustingly fortunate, I've got 20 decently good years. That puts me at 60 fucking nine years old. See, the chances that I'm going to not have many more health ailments above and beyond an arthritic hip and a, and a sore knee and a little bit of high blood pressure for the next 20 years are going to be slim and none. So I know I got to do better in taking care of myself. Okay, I do. I, I realize that. I did it once. I can do it again. But none of that changes the fact that my, my time is still finite, right? The way I look at it is I'm two-thirds of the way through my life, which means I'm two-thirds of the way. So other people will look at that and go, that means you're two-thirds of the way towards reuniting with your family in an afterlife. The, the, my beliefs, the way I believe reality is, is I'm two-thirds of the way from never seeing them again. And so that gives you this changing of the guard kind of mentality. And I do that a lot more now. I have no fucking idea why. Oh, I didn't used to cry for shit, except for a couple of movies. Anyway, so you start to realize uh, how little time you have left. And it kind of changes your whole fucking outlook, right? Now, all of a sudden, you're not in a hurry. You're not in a rush. You're not... Uh... Listen, I fly off the handle at the drop of a fucking hat, okay? A drop of a fucking hat. But um, not nearly as much as I used to. Not nearly as much as I used to. I let a lot more things slide. I let a lot more things roll. I try to play peacemaker a lot more. Because I look at it and I go, listen, dude, I'm, I'm almost 50 years into this. And I'm lucky if I got another 20 left. I just want it to be an enjoyable 20. I don't want to argue with my wife. I don't want to argue with my kids. Arguing politics on social media fine whatever it's 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 a nice pastime it gives me something to do during the day it's fun but you know what i mean in my interpersonal life i just want to have an enjoyable last 20 and so this rambling kind of incoherent bullshit that i'm telling you is is my way of saying um that we're entering into a period of the calendar in which a lot of Memories and, and significant days involving my father's death are going to come up. And I'm probably going to be this emotional fucking mess like my old man was. <laughs> like my old man was every time we got close to a significant day surrounding his life with Jojo. My dad had 20 something years with with Joe cuz he was she was his third wife. Uh he had like eight with my mother. He had a couple two three with Arlene in the middle. 
and then Josephine, he had he had a couple of decades, 21, 22. I got, I'd have to go back and look at it. And, uh, I see what went, what went, what he went through. Right? You don't realize how much you turn into your fucking parents. It's really fucking weird. God, I hope somebody's okay. That was an ambulance and a cop. Anyway, you don't realize how much you turn into your parents, but, uh, my father, like, when my stepmother was laying in bed, being pumped full of morphine at the house through home hospice care because pancreatic cancer was just eating her away. My father could not imagine leaving the house for anything. He had to leave the house occasionally to get food and one time to get a washer when the washing machine broke and he was in such a goddamn rush. He walked in. The first one he saw, he went, ship that to my house. Here's a credit card. And he walked out. And then my wife had a heart attack almost a year ago. We're coming up on it in May. And I remember sitting in the parking lot, not being able to go in because of COVID. And I was bouncing off the fucking walls. I was, oh. I was in this fucking car. It might have been my wife's Jeep, actually. And I was a fucking caged animal. And I walked around the the, the, the entire uh, hospital. I tried to get into every fucking entrance. I couldn't. Uh, got back to the the vehicle, sat there, and I was just, I was, I was, I couldn't handle it. Went home that night. She stayed in the hospital, and I was like, "Yeah, hey, that that sucks." So I look at my wife and I heading into this period of time in our life where we got a long time before we truly, truly, truly break down and have real true issues, but we're starting to have little little bits of medical issues and she's taking me to doctor's appointments and, and I'm reminding her to take her pills and, and uh, it begins to wash over you. It begins to make you realize that... Uh, that amount of time is is not much. Which brings me to another point, which I wasn't even going to talk about in this video. And if this, anybody is watching this video, could you please wear a fucking mask? Please. I would... My wife and I have already missed out on three vacations together. We enjoy going out to eat together. We enjoy going to do some things together from time to time. Uh, not much. You know, we're not going out to the movies all the time. You know, but we do enjoy going out and doing things from time to time. Just even regular Saturday running around. And we got an ass load of vacations planned. We do. We got an ass load of vacations planned. And and uh, we can't do them if you fuckers won't wear a mask. So wear your fucking mask. Uh, I don't even know how long I've been babbling here. 18 minutes and 46 seconds. It's just kind of a therapeutic thing for me. There really was no meaning behind the video. It was just kind of like this fuck. I saw this fucking memory on Facebook. I realized what the hell was going on. I looked at the calendar. I realized what time of year it was. I realized what we were heading into. And uh, it looks like my barber's not showing today. Or maybe they're not even open today. Maybe she doesn't open until tomorrow. Um, any hoodles. Um, and it just began to fucking whack me in the face. I wasn't even this fucking emotional when my father died. Uh, it's not, I'm not that kind of person, you know? I, 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 I take that shit in stride. And it is what it is kind of thing. But, uh... The, with every month, with every year that passes, it makes me realize how little time I have with my wife and kids. And, and we're not talking weeks or months. We decades. We still have decades. 
but it is it is shrinking, and I don't like it. It aggravates me. It bugs the fucking shit out of me. It is. It is. I'm a control freak. <laughs> I like to be in control. Okay. Uh, when when trauma hits, when 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 things go sideways, when shit gets fucking nutty, uh, that's when I I don't fold. I focus. And and I like to be be the person calling the ball, so to speak. You know what I mean? Being out there and and just saying we're gonna this is how we're gonna take care of things. Blah 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 blah. And I can't fucking do that because I can't control this. And it drives me fucking crazy. So I'm gonna stop uh, blabbering. I'm gonna get some uh, some gas. I'm gonna go check the post office box and run to the grocery store. Thank you for sitting through my therapy session. Send me a bill for the services.